Hi Tappers. Today, we are jumping into a series on self-abandonment, which can bring up a lot of big emotion. So be sure to have a technique to soothe those, such as the nine gamut or the box technique. If you don't know either of those, check out the videos in the description. These techniques will empower you. Self-abandonment is a psychology hot topic. It can be a bit muddy to try to understand as everyone has their own unique way of describing it. Let's break it down. Abandon is defined by the Oxford Dictionary as cease to support or look after, desert, give up completely. Add self to that and it is ceasing to support or look after yourself and to desert and give up on yourself completely. Now this may already feel emotional, so try to stay curious with me here. But if our biological goal is to survive, how does one reach a place where we leave ourselves? The obvious answer here is we weren't safe. We weren't a safe place staying us. That was threatening. Let's clarify that. Overwhelmingly, the science behind self-abandonment shows it begins in early childhood. As a child, you have very little choice with confrontation, even in a loving home. You can't tell your parents no, you can't refuse to do something, and you can't leave if you don't like what's happening. And if your parents aren't available to offer you support, you might find yourself alone in an overwhelming circumstance. As a child, this could be as simple as you can't find your comfort blanket or your comfort stuffy, which is terrifying for you, and no one is helping you. Or worse, they're criticizing you by saying you were careless or that what you wanted isn't important right now. That is extremely emotionally painful and qualifies in crossing the threshold of overwhelm that can cause lasting trauma. Your brain is saying, oh, it's too painful to be here, let's leave. And you dissociate from your feelings as a survival tactic. Everyone you asked for help sent the message that these emotions you feel aren't important. So you also force them out by refusing to be present and acknowledging of them. Now, you didn't have any other tools to deal with this, so this isn't about blaming yourself. In fact, this may have happened to you when you were too small to even remember it, such as if your family engaged in the cried out method of sleep training. There is scientific evidence showing how incredibly damaging this is, and that when babies stop crying when they're left alone, it's not due to self-regulating, but due to them giving up that anyone was coming. Real-time brain scans revealed the stress levels remained for them. They just simply gave up on being heard. Gabor Mate, who was a huge name in childhood trauma, has a great video about how this principle played out in his life, even though his mother's act that his brain translated as abandonment was to save his life. That video is linked in the description. So if you were too young to remember it, how can you address it through tapping? I'm glad you asked. We look for breadcrumbs that are active in your life today. We look for the beliefs that developed as a result of this abandonment. This could be people pleasing, which is a survival tactic, or believing you aren't worth supporting, you are embarrassing, you are shameful, you are hurtful to others when you are you. You are worthy of being mocked, you're too much, you aren't enough. Something that confirms why you being you isn't okay. Here is one way that you can map this out. Draw a bubble graph. In the middle, write, not safe to be me. Let every thought have a bubble, even if right now it doesn't make sense. Now, before you tap on this specifically, I have a mid step for you. Since there is so much pain connected to this, following this tapping script first is ideal. Even though, I have all of these painful beliefs. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though right now I absolutely feel these are true, I forgive myself. I forgive myself for accepting these beliefs. I did the best I could at the time and I did find a way to survive. I did find a way to be okay and I needed that. I give myself permission to release all judgments against myself for making this choice. I did my best and I'm sorry for any pain that it's caused. I didn't mean to cause pain. Even though my choices might be causing me pain, I deeply and completely accept myself. I found a way to survive. 
and I can acknowledge myself for that. But I wonder, is it still my best option? Or do I have more options, more tools, more choices now that I am older? As I ponder my choices, I give myself permission to have what I want, even if right now I'm not completely sure what I want. As I find it, I allow it. In fact, I'm determined to actively support it. And even if right now I have no idea how to do that, I bet I can figure it out. And I deeply and completely accept myself. Good job. Now take what you discovered in your graphing and process it. If you want directions on how, follow my Be Your Own Practitioner series for help. The first video should pop up right here. Next week, we will dive in deeper. I'll see you soon.